This is Writers on Film, the only podcast dedicated to books on cinema. Hello everybody and welcome to Writers on Film. My name is John Bleasdale. I am a writer and film critic and today I'm going to be talking to a bunch of writers uh, as I attended the 76th edition of the Cannes International Film Festival that takes place in the south of France annually from usually from mid-May to late May which was the case this year. I've been going to Cannes ever since well my first opening film I remember was Moonrise Kingdom so let me just actually I just check very quickly which was 2020 2012 sorry so that means I've been going to Cannes for 11 years although 10 editions because one of the editions was cancelled due to Covid and going back this year uh, Wes Anderson was returning from uh, uh, who is a, a regular he was there with his last film the french dispatch and this year with asteroid city there were a whole bunch of films that were from noted filmmakers nuri bilge uh, jalan uh, about gra dry grasses was uh, the film by the turkish filmmaker of once upon a time in anatolia and winter sleep who had won the the palm d'or uh, with Winter Sleep. The opening film was uh, Jean Dubarry by the French director Maiwen, who also starred in the film. It was an overblown Marie Antoinette-esque costume drama with a bit of stunt casting on the part of a sleepwalking Johnny Depp. Actually, Johnny Depp wasn't particularly bad in in it it was just it was just not a great film just a, it's a vanity case i think if uh if you want to read my reviews they're over on cineview.com c-i-n-e hyphen v-u-e.com some are also on um uh, the awards daily uh, website as well i refer to it in my review as a like an expensive box of chocolates where somebody else has the person giving you the box of chocolates has already eaten the chocolates and it's just the flashy gift wrappers uh, chocolate wrappers inside and not, not no, nothing to, to actually chew on so uh, yeah that wasn't great the best films for me were well the best film head and above head and shoulders above all of them was the zone of interest by Jonathan Glazer uh, which uh, came away with the second prize uh, awarded by Ruben Ostland's jury. Ruben Ostland, of course, is a two-time Palme d'Or winner with The Square and uh, Triumph of Sadness last year. I won't go into any more of the films because that's exactly what we do in our conversations. As the festival progressed, and uh, uh, I, I would defer to other people's opinions on, the, on, on some of these films, just in the space, I've had my chance with my reviews, so just in the space of this podcast, you'll hear other people's views more, more than mine. Uh, just a, a note about uh, the Cannes Film Festival, it's, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to see cinema uh, read in tooth and claw. There is every aspect of the, 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 the industry in terms of the marché, which is literally in the basement of the Palais de du Cinema, which is the uh, which is the main building which hosts the film festival. There is the the, the journalism, the press. Uh, usually, we meet in the press rooms. There are various ones, or on the ter terrace of the uh, of the Palais, where uh, where you can um, you can get a drink. Uh, and also, the the theatres, the the Bussy Theatre, um, is where most of the press screenings are hosted. This year, things were a little bit tricky because there was a. a a new ticketing system which was extremely wonky let's say it took a while to, for it to get going and um, really you had to kind of improvise your own your own way of getting tickets because the ticketing system was so um, miserly in handing out tickets so ironically I ended up getting tickets to everything I wanted to see uh, including the big splash films which I, I would guess before going in I would have said the biggest films were Martin Scorsese's uh, The Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> I remembered it in the end. And Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is the fifth return for the whip-cracking archaeologist played by Harrison Ford, who also picked up a surprise palm for his career, as did Michael Douglas, uh, one of the 
other aspects of the festival is that it kind of commemorates cinema to some degree and it makes uh, historical statements about cinema and that's always an interesting uh, an interesting thing to rub shoulders in fact one of the one aspects that was was lacking from this year's uh, uh, can was the uh, retrospectives weren't particularly good they didn't feel like there was a, a a real theme to them or there wasn't a person who was getting particularly you were getting a series of their films being shown but one interesting viewing which was kind of a little bit off off piste if you like was uh, there was a Q&A with Quentin Tarantino who is uh, sort of doing the rounds with his book um, Cinema Speculation which came out uh, uh, last year as well as a uh, interview uh, on on stage he uh, he sat in the cinema and watched Rolling Thunder with the assembled audience and at the 35 millimeter print and i have to say one of the worst prints in terms of sound quality that i've seen in a long time i mean at this point i love film i i love the idea of preserving film but kind of that degree of pops and crackles and hisses and and all the various things that the, the all the visual uh, lines and scratches that, that are on the film it just seems to me fetishism. It's like somebody who has a record player and then likes to put dust under the needle just to get that raspy sound of a, of a vinyl uh, from the olden days. So it's it's not to my mind it wasn't um, it wasn't the best viewing experience, but it was a unique viewing experience, and I'm certainly glad I tagged along and uh, and watched Rolling Thunder ag again, which um, Tarantino rates very highly. He thinks that this William Devane post Vietnam War revenge thriller is uh is one of the best films ever made um i would i would argue otherwise i think uh, william devane is is fairly he's okay you know uh i think the film's okay i don't think there's anything wrong with the film i think tommy lee jones uh elevates it quite a, quite you know quite quite dramatically whenever he's on screen but it's yeah but but that's as far as it goes as far as i'm concerned i don't see it as this huge masterpiece but it is uh it's an okay film and it was well worth watching and, and you know there's a nostalgia of just any film from the 1970s um looks better because the cars look better and the telephones look better and the places where they go in and things are shot in real places rather than on sets or with cgi green screens or back backdrops or whatever so there is just that nostalgic love of you know a cinema of things of clunky stuff talking a little bit too long here so i think i'll cut myself short and give over to some of the critics that i had the opportunity to talk to not many has to be said but uh, i think you'll you'll agree with me a choice selection uh, david marquand uh, was one he's a writer and editor uh, from neurouse uh, then you'll hear uh, a conversation with myself and Peter Bradshaw, and then there's a conversation between myself and Ed Potton, uh, Peter Bradshaw, sorry, of The Guardian, obviously. Uh, the final conversation is Ed Potton uh, of The Times and Joanne Titmarsh of The Evening Standard. So uh, it's a great selection of, uh, of critics, and frankly, uh, you know, people are very generous to give their time because um, Can is just so busy, you know, it's just so busy. I haven't really edited these conversations. Uh, I wanted you to get the feel of being there a little bit, and so a lot of the conversations have an element of silliness and roughness to them. Um, there's a little bit of swearing as well, which I will... Uh, uh, which I'll leave in. I'll leave all of that stuff in. I'll leave. I'll, I'll do the Tarantino. I'll leave in the pops and crackles. I'll leave in the lines. I'll leave in the uh, the fuzz, the fur, and the dust underneath the needle, so you can appreciate the vinyl experience of writers, film, in can. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Um, I saw uh, Terrestrial Verses and I saw um, 
what was the other one? Uh, the 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 Bellocchio. Oh right, yes. The, Rapito. The Rapito. Yes. Kidnapped. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that one. No, why not? I don't know. I just I I thought you know it was it was perfectly fine. I just didn't quite see what it was doing in competition. Yeah. Honest, yeah. Uh, the age it, and reverence. Yeah, that's it. But beyond that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's essentially it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, hello everybody. My name's John Bleasdale. Um, uh, today I am doing a Writers on Can special and I am here with David Moriquand, uh, who is a, a writer and an editor, I think, yeah, at Euronews. And he is going to be uh, giving us his impressions of the festival so far. And by so far, we're kind of almost at the end, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's winding down right now. I think we've seen the majority of the the big hitters. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's always, like, Ken Loach, who could be a kind of last minute, oh, my God, this could be fantastic. But considering he's won it twice, I doubt that that's going to be a major contender. And, um, yeah. Yeah, a few, a couple of Italians left. We've got uh, Alice Roacca and Nani Moretti, both to come. But yeah, a little bit, not not exactly, as you say, none of the big hitters. But how how has your festival been so far? What do you think of in general of the competition uh, and 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 the the program? I think it's been a really solid year. I mean, you know, beyond the fact that, of course, there's been the ticketing system problems and these absolutely manic queues, um, I think we've been treated to quite a, a, a solid festival and certainly a very impressive kind of competition lineup. Um, bar the opening film, I think there isn't a single film in competition this year that I've seen that I'm just like, oh, okay, well, no, I'm still quite happy to have seen it. You know, it might not vibe with me. It might not be one of those films that, you know, sticks with me personally. But it's 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 definitely been a very, very strongly curated lineup this year. And what is your sort of standout movie so far? Oh, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think this is a particularly hot take, but I, I, I think The Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer, I mean, you know, after, after 10 years, after Under the Skin, it's just one of those films which was just very eagerly anticipated, but just one of those films where you, 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 you really... I mean, I, I, I had screenings after The Zone of Interest, which I cancelled, and I'm not one to do that. <laughs> and basically, um, you know, when, 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 when you see a film, like the zone of interest that you want that to be the final film you see that year uh, almost you know not only that day but that year um, so no that that one for me has been a particularly stand a, a particular standout I think the majority of the the the, the press corps will be able to tell you the same thing I have to admit there's one uh, that, that also kind of stands out which is four daughters which is this um, incredible um, docu-fiction hybrid which really um, had the emotional goods and not only a very timely resonance but also something to say about extremism and about an indoctrination but the way it does it is so um, embedded in a very personal a very kind of um, intimate view of what it must be like to have in this case uh, children uh, be indoctrinated in any form of extremism and uh, that one really hit home I think that one is 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 definitely a, a standout and I it, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the Aki Kurismaki uh, Fallen Leaves which um, I can't remember the last time that a, a can audience started applauding before the actual end credits started rolling and the end of the film was there there's this uh, absolute beautiful and poetic kind of uh, uh, s cinephile kind of reference afterwards which is just essentially the the filmmaker making his uh, influences be known and uh, it's it's obviously it plays very very well with regards to a can audience and a, and a cinephile audience but um, I think it's this kind of droll finish kind of romantic comedy that essentially is beautiful and and deeply moving yeah, I love that. And those are, those are really good recommendations. I haven't seen Four Daughters yet. I've got a catch-up screening on Saturday. It, where is the, that film from? I know it's a, it's a sort of hybrid documentary about the ISIS recruitment, about the women. Uh, where, where's it coming out of? If I'm, pretty, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's Tunisia. And um, essentially, I don't, I don't know. It, 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 it's one of those films that just really... Um, I mean, I know that, for example, that Cannes um, has been 
I think, struggling to get com um, documentary films in competition. Uh, especially compared to Sur la Demont, uh, which won in Berlin, you know, obviously all the beauty and the bloodshed in Venice recently. So I think documentary is having this kind of, you know, um, like um, Lara Poitras said in, in Venice that, you know, documentary films are films, you know, they shouldn't be kind of in their own category compared to fiction films. And I think this one's a, a, a beautiful example of that and just something that really kind of, you know, merges the two forms between fact and fiction, but also has something to say about um, how you deal with grief and how you deal with essentially the, the, the this kind of unimaginable pain of, 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 of having this gaping wound that you just... You, you have to confront in some shape, way or form in order to kind of move on with your life and yet understand that something like extremism, something like a any form of, um, of extremist behavior is um, not only deeply terrifying, but also deeply human. It doesn't in any way hector, it doesn't, um, it doesn't point any fingers, but it just kind of really uh, focuses on the victims of that. And I, I, I found that incredibly moving. And also, you know, with regards to the new generation, specifically with what's going on in the world at the moment, uh, with, with all the protests in Iran, and, and it, it, it's, it's one of those things where you, you, you think, okay, this new generation is potentially one which will go forward and will not repeat the mistakes of the past. But then without spoiling too much of the film there is this very haunting final shot where it really makes you think yes a new generation will be able to break the chain but there's the danger that it won't and that these 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 indoctrinating behaviors are so deeply ingrained that we're we're almost doomed and 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 and, and the way it kind of plays with that the way it, it kind of strikes that very precocious, very, very delicate balance between um, hope and despair is, I, I, I found deeply moving. I'm so looking forward to it. You've uh, sold, sold, sold me on it, definitely. <laughs> and Zone of Interest, it's, it's curious that film came out and the day that Martin Amis died, the... Uh, just a weird uh, synchronicity to, to the whole thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I have to admit, um, I was writing on my review and it was about to be published and uh, then I saw the news and uh, the second that that dropped, uh, my editor uh, called me and was just like, right, you're on uh, obituary duty, quickly write the obituary and for the love of God, <laughs> revise your review so you mention the fact that Martin Amis has died. I mean, it's... Um, it's one of those kind of stranger than fiction kind mm. of things where it, it that that's what happened. But I think as a as a testimony to the um, to an author that really has made such a lasting impact on not only British literature but literature in general, and it is a, a beautiful testimony to what that that um, that particularly uh, that voice has achieved over time. And I I can't think of a better film to essentially just just go right well this is what this man was about and this is what we've done and quite frankly and without trying to be cynical about this I think um, if it doesn't win the the Palme d'Or which I think it will I can't think of any other film this year which which has a, a shot um, quite like Zone of Interest um, I, I, I think that um, it would be a, a very fitting tribute to, to, to the town of Martin Amis Absolutely well thanks so much David it's been a real pleasure talking to you Thank you very much, John. I'm getting so good at this. When I'm doing the, uh, uh, when I'm writing, when I'm at a festival, like for instance, the budgets run out for my my reviews now, so I've done my ten reviews. Right. And it's like, when I'm watching a film, it's like, oh, it's hardly worth watching a oh, film yeah, anymore exactly. if I'm not going to review it. I know. I feel that sometimes. Where you, particularly if it's quite an interesting or quite a difficult film, you just think, oh, I'm sort of off the clock now. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even though it's you know, quite an interesting film, it's a good film. But... Well, that's what, that's what Lydia always says when I'm sort of watching a film at home. It's mm. like, you, you say we're relaxing together, but you're still working, you're still really. still working, really, yeah. So how's, um, how's the festival been for you, Peter? Um, how's it been for me? Uh, it's been very good indeed. Uh, I've been 
very, very happy about the films that I've been watching. I haven't, I've only seen a couple of films that I thought were kind of clunkers. Otherwise, I found a lot to like, a lot to think about in every movie. And that thing that is often held against Cannes, that is to say it's, it's aging masters, it's silverback gorillas who are kind of wheeled out once again. Actually, I found that these older people, older men, I have to say, perhaps I should concede that point, are doing some outstanding work. I mean, I loved Marco, Marco Bellocchio, incredible. After half a century, after more than that, after Fists in the Pocket, he comes back, I think, with an absolute sort of barnstormer. His kidnap, I thought, was a barnstormer. Kind of old-fashioned, kind of melodrama. Mm, but, but, operetta, but almost. Opera, yeah, exactly. Real sort of Victor Hugo stuff. But absolutely rock and roll stuff. A rock and roll stuff. And Scorsese, at the age of 80, great stuff. Colossal western crime thriller in the grand classic american style how amazing that he's still got the still got the chops for that amazing great stuff there was lots of days of heaven in there i was noting yeah, as, as my, my malik head that's was, true uh, that's true yeah the fire yeah. and the do you know talking of malik i would say the malikian film is kind of perfect days by vim vendors mainly because franz lustig was the cinematographer was contriving these kind of golden hour kind of shots uh, for uh, the, the, the protagonists kind of ruminative epiphanic moments sitting in sun dappled parks sort of enjoying his life in this sort of zen accepting way uh, so I thought that for me was the Malekian moment of this festival was, was, was Vendors again good stuff from Vim Vendors I mean it's best film for I, think I, it's, I would argue decades I think it's a good film I'm, I liked Anselm better than that to be quite honest with you but it's certainly a good film and it's certainly a very plausible film and when he's mm. come to Cannes with some terrible films sometimes I've, I mean I'm a I have bitter memories of Palermo shooting that mm. terrible film he managed to pass off but again here's this guy and he's uh, again he is a veteran and yet he is coming up with some very very strong stuff very strong what did you think of the loach i saw that yesterday i uh, well here's the thing my thing about ken loach now is that i give him a sort of free pass for things which people don't give him a free pass for which is he uses as a part of his long-standing arrangement he uses non-professionals and first timers and it leaves them as it were almost sort of undirected and unedited so a lot of people just hate it they think what mm. is this amateur hour bullshit but I kind of, rightly or wrongly, don't see it that way. I've, my equally long-standing response is to see him as the John Bunyan of British cinematic social realism. That is to say, his plain speaking, unadorned, unironized. There is no, there is none. He rejects almost like Gerard Wynne Stanley. He rejects the luxury of artistry. There mm. it is. There mm. it is. Plonk. There mm. it is. Take it or leave it. You know. Uh, worrying about the artistry of the cinema is not as important as worrying about the oppression of the working classes. That's my take. Again, take it or leave it. Mm. Uh, and I've always taken it, rightly or wrongly. Right. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of a, um, a like a, a, a film community project where the film is not actually the most important thing. Yeah. It's a, the process kind of. of making it. Yeah, kind of. And other people... I've had that thought, and other people have it as a sort of gotcha. Mm. What a load of rubbish. Do you see mm. what it's like? Yeah, and he yeah. would say, yeah, that kind of is what it's like. And perhaps as a result of his colossal prestige, he's the only person allowed to think that. Mm. Nobody else is allowed to think that. A younger filmmaker wouldn't be allowed to come up and here and do that. No. And yes, it is a bit mystifying how he, not simply that he's allowed to do that, but that he's granted access at the very top over mm. and over again here to mm. do it. And, you know, we can have a conversation about that. But I'm, I'm terribly glad that he exists because nobody else, nobody else wants to do it. It isn't as if, you know, your film, Mr. Lurch, your film about the oppressed working classes and the Syrian refugees, that's terrible compared to the luxurious number of other films we've got on that subject. Look at all these other better mates we've got on exactly the subject. Actually, there are no other films on this subject. Nowhere, I don't know of any. And I know of loads of filmmakers who have who are called Lochian in the sense that they are affect the mannerisms, but in the, with the artistry that Loach doesn't have or doesn't want, mm. which is to say elaborately contrived shots of urban deprivation or rural deprivation, 
sometimes juxtaposed with some redemptive moment of natural beauty or something like that. Mm. That is actually not Lochin. Ken Loach has no interest in that sort of thing whatsoever. So I'm always taken back to a very good point. I can't remember who made this point. He said that back in the day, back in the late 60s, when let's say Kathy Come Home or Kez was coming out, if you compare it to Kubrick bringing out 2001, when Kubrick brought out 2001, it was real in that you thought, yes, actually, the moon landings are happening, and by 2001, it probably will be happening. Yeah, it was real. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he, his films were real, like 2001. He said, you know, the socialist, uh, not, perhaps not revolution, but socialist reform is coming in the same sense that the moon landing is going to lead to po uh, lunar exploration and interstellar exploration. And that was a mood that he had in the late 60s. Of course, it doesn't happen now. Yeah. You watch science, you watch sci-fi now and you think, of course, it's not going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. And people, however sympathetic they are when they watch social realist films, don't believe in their heart that, mm, that mm, it's going to happen mm. in the same way. But Ken Loach does. Yeah, and that's the first time I've ever heard Loach put together with 2001 A Space Odyssey, yeah. which is a, a, a heartening that's thing. A, <laughs> Ken should remake it. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. With uh, Lionel Rossiter, we have yeah, to get yeah, him yeah. back. You know? Yeah, exactly. Get him back. Really. Um, what, what are your predictions then? So we're on the final day of the festival and the, the Palm d'Or comes out and get, gets awarded um, tonight. I am predicting, and this is on a basis of what I think will win rather than should win exactly, but um, mm. I'm predicting the zone of interest. Um, which is a brilliant film, yeah. uh, unquestionably. Although in my tiresome and pathetic way, I have qualms about Mr. Glazer's super slick, chic, super stylish, Auschwitz I, chic. I do um, as well, but I thought the film included those qualms within themselves. And I, I right. guess it, there's a take it or leave it point there yeah. as well of yeah. um, oh, yeah. you trust him or you don't. You I know? think so. And there's no, <laughs> there's no film or more, filmmaker more with a possible exception of Ken, more take it or leave it than Jonathan Glazer, who is right. so magnificently unconcerned with what you think. Right. Even, or especially, if you like it. Yes. <laughs> he is not interested in your views either, which is, I think, is amazing. I think it's absolutely great. But I, I, if it was up to me, if by some terrible administrative error I was consulted, I would give it either to Kidnapped or I would give it to Alicia Rohrwacher's wonderful film, uh, her, her wonderful from La Camera, which again is some people have qualms that it's indulgent and it sort of goes off into a mad dialect of its own mm. but I, I loved it I, mm. I absolutely loved it uh, I thought that was a wonderful movie a very humane movie and I loved Josh O'Connor in it such an unusual he's very good in un, it unusual he? English language casting yeah he like looks like the English patient Ray yeah. Fiennes has been dragged very through Ray a Fiennes. hedge yes. you know. very Ray Fiennes very kind of classic uh, white suit acting but yeah I love, <laughs> absolutely adored it yeah absolutely I think uh, she's a great director I my qualms with that one was it felt a bit like a mood board it felt a bit like a, it, it gave me all the moods that I'm sure she yeah. wanted to give me but yeah. I d wasn't quite convinced she had a story to hang it on right 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 I, I, I get it I get that I, I think that the story was there for me right for me the story was his lost love and the idea that his grief had given him the superpower that he wants to reconnect with his lost love, so it's kind of warped into this sort of spidey sense. Mm, mm. Uh, and I, I, that's what I, that's what I took away from it. And uh, I, again, she's a wonderful presence at Cannes. Mm. A wonderful mm. sunlit way of ventilating Cannes is a is a broad of film. I think she's the most interesting Italian director currently working. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe her and Garoni are the are the two yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. I've been a bit. I certainly zoned out of Nanny Moretti, which I th I thought was the clunker of this year's festival. It, I, th I really thought it that. wasn't as awful as Three Floors. I didn't think, but I thought his pronouncements on the on how to make a film, you can't yeah. do that if you're not making amazing films. No. <laughs> you know, I personally think, and you're doing that kind of. I here I am in my midlife way. Everyone's an asshole these days, except yeah, yeah. me and my friends. Here I am at the end of a long meal, and I've got drunk and dyspeptic and grumpy. It's as if you're at the end of a lo I mean, I've had these conversations in dinners at camp, yeah, listening yeah. to people say, you know what, the movies are bullshit nowadays. Cinema is bullshit. Netflix. Taking meetings with Netflix, you know, people who, I mean, they might, that, that scene, the Netflix suits might have said, well, we work with Martin Scorsese and it's good enough for him, Chief. Yeah. So why isn't it good enough for you? Him? Can't get on the you phone. can't get on the phone. And that's a terrible scene because he yeah. phones up Martin Scorsese, leaves a message and we thought, 
okay, he's got it. That's going to be a joke at the end. Martin's going to call him back at the very end. We're waiting. Nothing. Yes. Absolutely fucking. And he's doing this with Marshall McLuhan, Woody Allen, rubbish with other walk-ons. And there's nothing more depressing than a kind of sentimental, self-congratulatory parade of Italian cinema cameo greats. Why? I don't, it's just depressing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Make a good film. That'll make me feel good about the Italian cinema. Yeah, there you go, absolutely. Yeah. Um, make a good film. Don't, don't sort of lecture us about it in that boorish way, that kind of dyspeptic, boorish way. I, I don't know. And I love Nanny Moretti. I think The Sun's Room is the greatest palm winner of my lifetime. But right. That's right. the one, the mum can moment I kind of zoned out. Oh, dear. This is, but as I say, that was very rare. I mean, I've had years where I've had three or four moments like that. I have, I have a feeling that Club Zero will pick up a prize. It wasn't a film I particularly liked, but I just think that the Ruben Osland and the ju uh, being jury Maybe. president, Maybe. he'll go for the vomit. Yeah, he may well go for the vomit. Although my experience of jury presidents is that they will go for the very opposite of what they like, uh, just to sort of keep you on your toes. Uh, there's another director that I li have liked in the past, but I think she's making nebula stuff now. I yeah. think Club Zero was nebulous. Lourdes was one of my favourite films. Yeah, of, it's a masterpiece. Whenever it was, it's a mind blowing film. Yeah. It is an absolute masterpiece. I love Lourdes, but this. Like this and Little Joe last last time, whenever it was, two or three years ago. I don't know, I felt it was nebulous. Yeah. And I felt that, you know, the line readings were kind of torpid. I, went I wondered, it's one of these rare times I have in the world of international cinema when you think to yourself, can she hear how that sounds in English? That's, or is it, or she just thinks, yeah, that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of music I want. Yeah, yeah. kind of deadpan. Yeah, that sounds fine. You know, good stuff, everyone. And I'm thinking, I don't think it is good stuff. It sounds torpid in the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's. I, I, I've seen movies about eating disorders and anorexia and so on, which use those things to make a real point. Whereas I think Club Zero was sort of circling around in a world of its own. So I, I, I mean, it's well shot, beautifully designed. I mean, I quite like that kind of indeterminate. Is it supposed to be in Europe? Is it supposed to be in the UK? Mm. Where is it happening again? You know, this this middle European intimacy I thought was kind of interesting, but no, that was a miss for me. That was a miss for me. Oh, thanks so much, Peter. Not at all, not at all. non ci deve essere più niente, bisogna cominciare subito, coraggio al lavoro, buttate giù, dico bene autore? Sì, grazie, arrivederci ragazzi, ci vediamo in un prossimo lo speriamo. Ciao Marina. Coming soon, Cinema Italia, a new podcast dedicated to the glories of Italian cinema. Each week, special guests from around the world will discuss their favorite Italian films, from spaghetti westerns to neorealism, Jali to Roberto Benigni, La Dolce Vita to Cannibal Holocaust. We'll be casting a new light on old classics, as well as exploring recent currents in contemporary Italian film. Along the way, we'll unearth some lesser-known gems. Subscribe now, so as not to miss an episode. Presented by me, John Bleasdale. Oh, okay. Am I speaking? Okay. So my highlight. Yeah, you are is speaking. Hello. Do I need to introduce myself? Yeah, you can do if you want. Yeah, go on. Um, Ed Potton, The Times. Um, hello, John. Hello, Ed. Do you want me to describe where I am at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting can you on a picture? the Terrasse des Journalistes, um, looking at the sun go down um, to the west. Uh, it's the last day of the festival. About to hear who's won the Palm d'Or. It's 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 been a it's been a quite a kind of roller coaster of a can, hasn't it? I mean, it, it's definitely been there have been quite low points or, or, or kind of maybe low is 
Low points were bit. before you arrived, Ed, when it rained. Yes. Basically, Joanne Titmash, the evening standard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when it rained. It but as soon as I arrived, basically, it started getting good. Um, and, no, it's been fun. Um, uh, my favourite film I've seen, I'm, I'm gutted I didn't see The Zone of Interest. My favourite film I've seen, probably... Um, hello. You're listening. Are you, are you, you're wanting to hear what, which, which my favourite yeah. film is. It's between Perfect Days... And Anatomy of a Fall, I would say. I liked them both a lot. Probably like four and a half stars each. I haven't seen a five-starer, I would say. But I suspect if I had seen The Zone of Interest, I would have given that five anyway. Yeah. Um, my favourite night, though, well, two favourite nights. There was one night where we all went for dinner um, with how many of us? Eleven of us in the end. Long table, upstairs room. That was lovely. And the Kanzen party was really fun. Perfect level of drunkenness, perfect friends, perfect music. Left a reasonable time what's not to like dancing on the beach indeed excellent stuff you know what happened to me today I was packing to get ready to leave tomorrow and uh, I put my sparkly silver sandals away and when I picked them up loads of grains of sand oh, fell out of them lovely. and that was a really nice moment for me actually I do like keeping a bit of sand like um, Tom what's, what's the guy who died the Saving Private Ryan guy he Tom always put, Hanks not Tom Hanks <laughs> Tom Sizemore. Oh, okay. Tom Sizemore. Yes, yes, sorry, yeah. To say, if I had died, I'd got... miss that one. Yeah, no, no, that's since, not. That's since, yet to... since the red carpet incident. Are you, are you, are since are you recording this, John, thinking that you're going to use it professionally? It's all going in. Absolutely it's all going fucking in. gold. Um, all going in. What are you collecting it for? For the writers on film, it's going to be uh, writers on can. Hello, collage. Um, my that highlights have been seeing the. Uh, what, the really moving showreel that uh, the, the festival put on for Harrison Ford oh, at yes. the gala screening of Indiana Jones. It was so beautiful. And to see his career over the years and just think, oh my God, and there all, he is, uh, Han Solo. There he is, Indiana Jones. And when, there I is, mean, you, you may disagree with the this, witness. but um, Rick the Clark era, mm-hmm. there are a few male humans that have been that handsome as he was in Round Le- Rage of the Lost Ark era, don't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's Robert Redford, Paul Newman, I mean, handsome. He's fucking, fucking handsome at that point, isn't he, he's in, in his life? He could basically pull anyone he wants, male or female, but generally female, I, I think, suspect. Well, I think Harrison generally Ford. male, yeah. actually, judging by, by your yeah, expression. Yeah, yeah, some, of, some of that enthusiasm. <laughs> he was, yeah, yeah, I think he was more, I think he was more... For, the guys really yeah oh come on yeah no, I, I, I've never, you've I've never been sexually attracted to harrison ford there but i don't know many women that have him on their sort of list really? of this, is, this is news that to they me want to okay fuck. yeah right i definitely want to fuck him yeah even exactly. now so, even at 80 uh, I, i'm not 88 until i act <laughs> <laughs> Feeling, is this like going to make the cut? All of this is going in. I'm not editing it. <laughs> it takes too long to edit it. It's all going in. Oh, right. There is so no fee roll. Can you change my, my name? Yeah. Can you call me Ped Motten? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want to be saying Ped in this. No, God. <laughs> not Respectable. in this environment. Should not we add in this that it economy. Has been the pedo can. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, um, not not in terms of the off off film behaviour, yeah. but in terms of the actual films. Yeah, definitely. Should we count the, should we count very, the films? Uh, like, pedotastic time. That so we've dry all been grasses. Um, uh, Last Club summer. Zero. Um, I mean, May, I mean, even the idol December. is not quite classically pedophilia, but it's definitely exploitation of young people yes yeah. but not children not children um, um, yeah last summer did we say like, um, yes. what else there's another one I'm sure there's another pedo-tastic film here that we've missed but yeah the, yeah the, definitely the kind of uh, there has been an ongoing theme of exploitation oh, no, of kids tour, which had the 15 year old yes yeah, exactly with the, uh, sexy so yeah I, I don't know what we should interpret that uh, yeah it, it seems um, to it seems to be on everyone's minds can Plus ça change. Plus ça change. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's how it's always been. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, and uh, the low point of the festival, like a film you really didn't like, or or even just an aspect oh, of the you festival. Know what I'm going to say for this, don't you? It's going to be ahead. different yeah. to you, but the Ken Loach definitely. Go on. Um, can't you know? There's been lots of adulation for him over the years here. Quite rightly, most of it. Um, but he was, yeah. If ever he was trading on his reputation, I think it's this one. Um, it's. You know, great idea and great that he's making a film about the friction between um, Brits who feel like they've been left behind in 
very subtle this 2016 and uh, Syrian immigrants or refugees um, great that he's making film because not many people are making films about that subject which is fantastic execution however awful I thought dreadful script dreadful characterization dreadful acting Sorry, um, sorry, Ken. <laughs> wow. and I met him as well the other day. And he was I, so nice. Yeah, yeah, he smiled at me in my hotel the other day. I think we just um, have to say for the record, Ed Potton, Tory scum. Tory scum. Sorry. Be, yeah. yeah, I was. Yeah, I was told to write that obviously by my editor because I work for a right wing newspaper. I think the low point for me was standing in the rain for an hour with a ticket to get in to see a Strange Way of Life and being turned away and oh, no, I haven't heard about this yeah and that was so that was a real low point because I had to write about it and so I know it's not like going down a mine like Ken would uh, want me to do Ken's never gone down a mine well the point Ken's is there aren't mines anymore yeah yeah, 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 so, yeah exactly um, because the Syrian immigrants have taken away all the mines but when you're trying to do your job and that happens it was really uh, it was a bit of a low point um but then it, it, tu- it turned into a high point because I went for lunch with a really nice bunch of people who I didn't know. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I haven't heard about this. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you were to rank this can, compare it to previous cans you'd attended, where would you put it? Has it been a classic can or has it been a shambolic? It's been a can of highs and lows, hasn't it? Quite extreme highs can. and lows. Well, you yeah. were only here for one week. So. But even in that week, it's, it seems like it's been quite eventful. I think that in terms of quality of cinema, this has been a really great year. Do you think? Okay. Yeah, a lots of four star Films, yeah, I mean, I haven't star. seen a five starer, but as I say, I would have probably given. Because you missed the best. Film. Yeah, I missed the best film, which is gutting. But you know, it'll be on. I suspect they might show it and in, it in the, the right UK am- at some point. I had the right amount of kind of the, the frisson of danger and drama. There was quite a lot of seamy kind of, yeah, brave filmmaking, wasn't yeah. there? And there were quite a lot of ambiguous protagonists, which I quite liked. People you weren't necessarily meant to adore yes. or abhor. The hero of the film is yeah. not a hero. Yeah, I think, and I like think that's Chilin as it should be. Yeah, Andrea. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Brilliant. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. You're we love amazing. you. That's staying in. <laughs> You keep saying these things as if I'm going to cut them out. Messieurs, dames, si vous n'avez pas de place, vous ressortez, vous montez au balcon, s'il vous plaît. Tous les gens debout. So we're at the final screening of the Cannes Film Festival. I'm going to see a film called Four Daughters, which is a hybrid documentary and is in competition, which leaves only black flies... Uh, and one other film, whose title I can't quite recall, unseen in the competition. I'm in the Debussy, which is a theatre which uh, seats around about 900 people, almost 1,000 people. And is one of the main venues for the press screening. It's a huge screen, one of the largest in Europe. And we had to queue quite a while outside to get in today because there seems to be a lot of people still around. Usually at this point, the festival thins out somewhat and the Marche finished on Wednesday. So a lot of journalists have gone home. A lot of business people, industry people have certainly gone home. But there seems to be a lot of people here as well from the public. So a lot of people have bought tickets for these catch-up screenings. has gone to Anatomy of a Fall by Justin Treat uh, and starring Sandra Huller who was also in Zone of Interest 
film that won the second prize at the Cannes Film Festival this year. I would say that my favourite film of the festival was Zone of Interest. And I can't help being a little bit disappointed that that hasn't come away with the top prize, despite the fact that um, prizes and juries and competitions and all that, they're good for generating discussion, but they shouldn't be seen as any real arbiters of taste or arbiters of, of quality. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good idea. It's a good, a good thing to talk about, but as long as we don't take it all too seriously. The noise you can hear in the background is a firework display, which is going on been going on for the past five minutes which is uh, celebrating the end of um, the film festival um, that it stopped now maybe yes some seagulls instead um, on the whole I think looking at the competition generally it's been a really big year of high quality films there have been a lot of four star films a lot of five star films um, again, you might not think the star rating is particularly important, but it's a good shorthand for... for <laughs> there you go again. I mean, I hope it's a firework display, because it might, it might be something else. Um, uh, I particularly liked Wang Bing's uh, Youth, which was a p first part of a documentary series, which is going to, um, I think, take in several festivals, including Venice, a three-and-a-half-hour documentary on... Uh, the um, Chinese workers in the uh, clothing industry. Really interesting and really... Uh, you know, it's not, it's not going to be an easy sell, three and a half hours of um, people working, but, uh, and, and, but, but it's also about people living and their lives, you know. So it's a really, really good, good watch, I thought. Very, very interesting and fascinating once you get over the initial... Uh, idea of what you're watching um, I also very much enjoyed uh, the parader monster it's just impossible to do these there's a, a moment in Anatomy of a Fall where an interview fails because some music is being played loud and that sounds a little bit like this now yeah. it's almost impossible for me to talk coherently while this is going on wow okay So I hope you enjoyed uh, that little glimpse of Cannes. It's one of my happy places, one of the places I most enjoy being. Uh, it is truly a festival of cinema. It is truly a celebration. I've been to many festivals and Cannes is in its own way unique. Um, you've got the Quasette blue skies well except for the start of the festival where it rained like it was Barrow and Furnace for some reason stupid stupid weather but we got soaked and we went in and saw films anyway because that is the kind of people we are heroes and martyrs to the cinematic cause uh I left in a lot of the ragtag stuff. I hope it doesn't try your patience too much, but I really wanted you to get an impression of the sort of atmosphere. And a lot of it, you know, the best thing about the festival for me, 100% the best thing without any shadow of a doubt is the people you meet. The people who you meet, who you talk to, the colleagues, the, the distributors, the people in the industry, the producers, the actors, the directors, of course. Everyone you meet um, is there for a, a love of cinema or a need to make money, <laughs> which, isn't a, which isn't necessarily that bad a thing, if you can do it. I certainly don't want to go there and lose money, put it that way. Um, so it's uh, it, it, it just brilliant to, to, to be with those people and to share with them a passion for cinema and to disagree. One of the important lessons I always learn in Cannes is no matter how bad you think a film is, for someone, it's their favourite film. And no matter how much you love a film, for someone, it's their worst film of can. So you get a real set. And these people are, um, and, are not idiots. Not at all. You know, people you disagree with, know more about cinema, are more articulate, are more clever than I am. Um, but we have these huge disagreements, and why not? Absolutely. And that's something maybe Twitter could learn and other social medias, that people who don't agree with you don't do so out of some sort of bad faith or some incompetence or ignorance. They do so because they have their own reasons, they have their own life experience, and they come at it from a unique angle. And if you uh, shut up for a second and listen, like hopefully I have done, 
um, you learn stuff and you might not change your mind. You don't need to change your mind. Your perspective is as special, unique and interesting as anybody else's. You don't have to change your mind. But if you listen, you might be able to but just deepen and enrich your own love of cinema. So that's my plea to you, film Twitter and film everybody, uh, is, is let's, let's listen to each other and let's try to um, let's try to, to enrich the culture of conversation and discussion when it comes to the world of film. Uh, the next next week, I have a um, uh, we will be resuming normal uh, normal service uh, as another writer comes on board to discuss their book. Um, please check out my uh, my other podcast, Cinema Italia, which is an English language podcast. I hasten to add, which is exploring the world of Italian cinema from the beginning to the end. Uh, out of order, out of chronological order, as people come o- come onto the pod and they discuss their favorite Italian films. And so far, we've had four or five episodes, and they've been wonderful. They're really, they've really been interesting for me as a as a lover of Italian cinema, somewhat critical lover of Italian cinema, someone who lives in Italy and has experience. Uh, you know the, the unique situation of the of this beautiful country um so if you have the opportunity please subscribe to that um obviously if you haven't already subscribed to writers on film as well make it a, a, a twofer um none of these there's no paywall there's no patron there's no uh there's nothing you need to put down you just need to listen subscribe uh review like and spread the word Thank you very much as well to all the listeners of Writers on Film who approached me during the Cannes Film Festival, of which there were several who uh, enjoyed it. And it's so it's great to meet you in the flesh and it's great to hear your feedback because, um, yeah, it's great. It's it's incredibly encouraging. I cannot tell you how encouraging that is. Um, So thank you for that. Best wishes, everybody. And we'll talk next week. Right.